to Montpellier. Saracens face defending champions La Rochelle in the quarterfinals after they beat Ospreys. Love the drama, don't you? What a finish for them. Unbelievable having to secure that kick, which he did. And uh, that is just about it this morning. Uh, back to you guys. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers, John. It's quarter to nine after three decades as the voice of BBT, BBC, BBC Radio 2, sorry, mid-morning show, Ken Bruce presented his final programme last month. Today, the veteran broadcaster returns to the airwaves, taking over as the host of a new slot on Greatest Hits Radio. And we can speak to Ken live on breakfast now from his new studio home. Good morning, Ken Bruce. Thank you for joining us just before you go on air. Um, does it feel like home yet? Yeah, I think it does, uh, John. Yeah, it does feel like home. I've been here a few times over the uh, last few weeks, getting used to the place, finding out how things work and uh, seeing which buttons to press. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm feeling at home now, but of course I, I may still occasionally bump into the furniture because I don't quite know where everything is, but I, I'll find my way eventually. What will be different on air? You know, I don't think much will be uh, different on air. I'll still be, you know, me, whatever that is, and I'll be playing at Popmaster at 10.30, as I have been for several years now. So there'll be that, and a couple of other features, and just the listeners interacting with me, and oh, I hope they'll be there and interacting, but, uh, yeah, we'll just be doing much the same thing as I've been doing all these uh, last few years. But I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, it's, a, it's a, a fresh start. It's something a little bit different in a new place. And uh, I think you know, it's always good for somebody just to try something a little bit new. So there I am, ready to go. But it must feel a little bit strange, doesn't it? Just moving to a new home and even doing the same thing in a new home. Is it, it a bit odd? There, there is a certain uh, aspect of oddness about it, yes. I mean, uh, you know, I look around the studio I'm in and it's not quite the same as it was. And there's always a thought about which button to press, but actually it's really easy here. It should be, at any rate. I'll make my excuses now. I won't make too many mistakes, I think. But, uh, yeah, there's a certain strangeness. But when you're on the radio, it's almost the same anywhere you are, really. You're just talking into that microphone to one person at the other end, usually just one person. Uh, and that never really changes, no matter where you're doing it from. Lots of the Radio 2 Army and people within the BBC were heartbroken when you made the decision to leave. What was the thing that pushed the decision in the end? And can you remember that moment of thinking, right, my mind is made up, I'm going to go? I don't think there was one uh, moment. It was just a gradual realisation that uh, I'd been at the BBC for a long, long time. I'd done almost everything I think I could do at the BBC, and so I thought, well, is there one last challenge left in you? And I thought, yeah, let's go and try it somewhere else. Uh, and so that's what I've ended up doing. I don't think there was a, a single moment I could pinpoint where I uh, wanted to leave, and it was never really a, a desire to get out of the BBC. It was really just a, a chance, an opportunity to move forward and do something slightly different while I still can. So uh, that's why I'm here. How long do you think you'll stick with it, Ken? Now, is this, is this a sort of short-term project or uh, probably not another 46 years like you were at the BBC, but is, do you see this as the beginning of a, a whole new long career? Well, you know, I think 46 years might be pushing it a little bit, <laughs> although, you know, I'm prepared to... I am, I'm prepared to have a go at it. You know, 46 years, I'll be 100 and... Well, yeah, let's, uh, you know, medical science could have moved on a lot by that time so I'm, I'm hopeful but certainly I, I'm not here just for a week or two I really want to you know stay here as long as I can and do uh, you know as good a job as I can if I ever feel I'm not doing the job that I used to as well then I will step away but at the moment I think I think I'm getting away with it still well Popmaster Ken Bruce master of the Popmaster can we turn the tables on you and put you through a Popmaster quiz we don't have all the fiddly bits of the countdown or anything can we ask you some questions? Well, I don't expect any correct answers because, uh, <laughs> as everybody who's in the quiz business knows, it's, it's a lot easier to ask questions than to answer them, but I'll give it a go. Yes, certainly. I would second that as a presenter. Asking the questions is the easy <laughs> yeah, bit. Um, okay, number one. What 2001 number one by Jerry Halliwell, oh, this is easy, was a cover of an 80s song by the Weather Girls? It's Raining Men. As opposed to all those other big hits by the Weather Girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you started with a simple one. Thank you for that. 
What about this one? This is a good one. The Jam sung about a town called Malice in 1982, but what type of town did they sing about in their 1979 Ooh. hit single? For three points, Ken. Ah, now the jam was that... Oh no, I was just about to say the wrong thing there. I was about to go with the specials. Uh, a town called Malice we've had. Uh, are you talking about Eaton Rifles by any chance? No, no. Contains the word town. Oh, am I being too... Oh, the word town is in it? Yeah. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. I'm, I've gone off on the wrong tangent here. I was, I was trying to... I thought you were being clever there, but no. No uh, danger of that. So, uh, oh, no. It's not going Never underground. Because that, that, that's underground. That would be London underground. That doesn't count. No, no, I know. I'm sorry. You've got me there. Strange Town. Strange Town, 1979. Of course. Of we course. beat Ken Bruce Silly at Popmaster boy. Nina. As Ken always says, it's easy once we tell <laughs> the answer, isn't it? <laughs> have you heard, have you heard <laughs> the, new, the new Radio 2 equivalent? Um, what's it called? Uh, Ten to the Top. Their replacement for Popmaster. Have you heard that? I haven't been listening to that, I'm afraid. No, I'm sorry. Have you not been listening to Radio 2, really, genuinely? No, uh, genuinely, because uh, when I'm uh, when I'm not at work, I, I listen to other things, other types of, uh, of radio. So I've been uh, listening to other kind of programmes all the time. Just, just to freshen the palate, you know what I mean? <laughs> Fair enough, Ken. And very quickly, because you did work on Eurovision, a month to go to Liverpool. This was our Popmaster question from Liverpool this morning. How many of the five UK wins at Eurovision can you name? Uh, five UK wins. Right, pop it on a string. Um, let's no, that's 1966. Uh, and, uh, the UK wins. Uh, we've got, uh, of course, Katrina and the Waves was the most recent one. Uh, I was nearly going to say Sam Ryder, but he didn't win, did he? He only came no. second, which was great. But uh, so, uh, how long have I got on this answer? Shall we tell you? It was Lulu with Boom Bang Bang, Brotherhood of Man. Save Your Kisses and Books Fizz Making Your Mind Up. We were going to send you a BBC Breakfast well, mug, but you've not got enough, right, I'm afraid. No, well, that's all right. Luckily, I've got a glass here from uh, <laughs> Greatest Hits Radio. It's not bad, <laughs> but it is the right thing. So, it, it... How about we send you a Radio 2 bumper sticker? <laughs> Certainly. <yeah. laughs> That'll go on the back bumper, no problem at all. That'll go down well. <laughs> Ken Bruce, thank you very much indeed. Good luck with the show on air. 10 o'clock. Yeah, good luck with your next venture, Ken. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's coming up Thanks, to John. five Thanks. to nine. Uh, let's talk now about a teenager now known as Tent Boy who spent his final night sleeping under the stars after three years camping in the garden. Yeah, we've met him here on Brexit.